Hello everyone, and welcome to our second video in our series going through the Automation Direct Productivity Series uh, programming environment um, using the Productivity Series P3 or P3000 series um, controller as well as chassis. Um, so in this video, we're going to kind of pick up where we left off and we're going to go through talking about the chassis itself and uh, adding the modules to the chassis as well as doing some of the tag generation and um, potentially naming your tags should you want to. So in our last episode we talked a little bit about adding this remote base chassis. I'm going to go ahead and delete it because once again we're not going to use that at this time. Should we need one later on down the road we'll go ahead and add one then. Um, double clicking on our chassis again opens it up and we are left with our five um, module slots that we're able to fill with some type of input. Now, once again, as we kind of discussed before, should you want to know what these actual inputs are, whether they're, you know, I mean, obviously like a an 8, a 16, a 32, and a 64 are the, the references to the, the physical input numbers that correspond within the input module, but should you need to determine whether it's a uh, syncing, sourcing, um, DC versus AC type of um, module, whether it's for thermal couples, whether it's for something else, what it might exactly entail, what it might be, relay outputs, those kinds of things. The best bet to do is to go to the Automation Direct website, type in those particular numbers, and reference those there, as well as referencing what you may be using or referencing something along those lines. The one benefit that I do say, um, well, let me come back to that. I will come back to that in a little bit later on in this video. Um, when you have the module, for instance, that you want to use and you want to install it into the slot, you're just going to go ahead and click and drag and drop it where you want it. So, for instance, I'm going to use the P316NA and I'm going to go ahead and drop that in slot 1. Now this particular module happens to be a 16 point input 100 to 240 volts AC so this is where I would normally use a single phase uh, 120 volt input. Um, one of the benefits to this that I really do like from Automation Direct versus Allen Bradley is I don't have to know what the revision is. So like in an Allen Bradley PLC I'd have to know the revision number and it corresponds with it. Um, so, looking at the front of the module, if it's already put together, um, I don't have to pull the, the cards out and look at them. I can go ahead and just look at the number on the front right here of the module. And this is an actual image of the module, by the way. But I can go ahead and look at the front of the module right here, and I can see, oh, okay, well, it's just going to be the, the P316NA. And I can just click and drag and drop that in on my particular thing. Now, that's entirely uh, useful when you don't need to know all those revision numbers, but um, sometimes it's it's kind of, you know, force of habit. You get used to wanting to put all those in. But either way, pretty straightforward and to the point there on the adding of this particular module. Now, we're going to talk about tag names. So the tag names correspond with the particular... Um, module itself so it's a discrete input and then it's going to be I believe this is going to be slot 1 corresponding with 1 1 then 1 2 and so on um, it could actually be that this is the the first chassis that we're using and then corresponding like that and to double check that let's just go ahead and add two modules in here and let's double check that okay so yes, this would be the first one represents the, the chassis that it's located in. The second one represents the slot number that it's located in within the chassis. And then the following number is the physical input itself. So going back to our first module we were looking at here. Okay, should you want to change the tag name? There, there are multitudes of ways to change tag names. And we'll, we can talk a little bit about those corresponding within the video. But for the sake of our moment at this exact moment we can go ahead and change the tag name itself here we can 
select a tag that exists within the program. We can go ahead and change the tag name to, let's say, uh, input1. We could change this to input2. Excuse me. We could go back and add default tags. We could remove default tags. We can add the default tags back in. Um, and we can go through it in those situations. You could also monitor it if you were connected online. One of the benefits that I like about this is it's very straightforward, kind of like the old school RS Logix 500 programming. Again, for those that are familiar with um, Rockwell programming softwares, is because it automatically defaults all of your known given tags, your known given values, your inputs, your outputs, etc. And you have the ability to go in and change the name of the tag. Doesn't change its physical reference point, doesn't do any of that, it just changes the name of the tag. Um, again, one of the benefits of the remove default tag button is you can go through and you can name all your tags corresponding with how you want them to be. Should you want them back, you, again, you can the add default tag. Once you're satisfied with that, just click OK. Um, I added this earlier just as a, as a review of the module. I'm going to go ahead and delete it because we're not going to use it. Um, we're going to use this P316TA as our output for demonstration purposes. This is a physical um, type of output. It's not a relay output. It's going to use a, a uh, solid state type of output within the system that's using it as our output. There are two built-in fuses that the system is able to monitor. You could go ahead and change the names of those as well. And just like the other one, we have the ability to go in and change all of the tag names should we desire to do so. In our particular case here, I'm just going to go ahead and leave them, and we can change them later as needed. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Once you're satisfied with all of that, and you've got all the cards in there that you want, the modules that you need, um, and we can come back and add a couple more modules later on should we need them, and we can talk a little bit more about them. Again, going through the modules, you have analogs, inputs, outputs, you have a couple of analog uh, combination modules. Yeah, specialty modules. So this is a high-speed input module. And we'll go ahead and add this in here. And this is a serial communications module. So we have the ability to set different bits for our serial communication um, depending on our needs and how they're used. But again, back to what I was stating. Um, once we are done, we go ahead and hit the close button. And that's all saved for us. Um, later on, should we want to change our tag names, should we want to do something along those lines, we have the ability to again go back to Application Tools window over here on the left side of the program, and we would double click on our tag database. It opens up all of our tags, and should we want to see all of our discrete tags, we have the ability to do so here. We can see all of our discrete inputs and we can see our tag names as well as the physical name that we have named them. So should we want to change our names here we could go ahead and change it to input 3 and then just click enter once you've typed it in and you have all of that there. You want to see your outputs you can also click your outputs. You also have mod module status, analog inputs, analog outputs, should you have those PDS structures, UDS structures, and we'll go through and talk about what these are later on and some other ones, some floats, integers, strings, etc. Again, we'll go through and talk about some of that stuff later on. But should you want to see your tags, this is the place to do it is in the tag database. Once you're happy with all of that, you could, excuse me, before we get done with that, if you want to add tags, you can click add tag and you can decide whether it's going to be an integer, um, whether it's going to be a, whether it's an integer, uh, single integer, integer, or a double integer. Um, you have the option to make it as a float and then a string as well or you could also make a boolean tag. Um, you have the ability to leave it as an internal. You could create an IO. Um, usually your IO is going to be related to one of your IO tags that are already physically designed based on your input or output module depending on what you're using there. 
Um, then you could create a 1D or 2D array should you would like to do so and we'll talk a little bit more about those in some later videos. Um, but once you're satisfied with all of that, you just hit close there. And then again, if you're satisfied with what you've seen here, you can go ahead and close that as well. Um, I do believe there is another spot up here where we can go ahead and enter our tag. Um, yep, okay, here it is. So at the top here, you can also use the upper ribbon here, and you can go to the tag database um, through the edit tab, and you can open it up and do the same thing there as well. That concludes everything that we have to discuss in this video about um, the very basics of the tags, as well as adding input and output modules to our chassis. So as always, stay tuned for our next video. Thank you.